Today's Marvel Snap deck highlight is an ongoing ramp deck. Ramp, for those not familiar with the term, refers to a deck that is looking to have additional energy ahead of when it should. Electro in Marvel Snap is our quintessential ramp card, giving us an additional maximum energy, letting us play five energy cards on turn four and six energy cards on turn five, etc. In addition to Electro, we also have Wave that can let us play expensive cards ahead of time, starting on the fourth turn of the game. What this deck is looking to do is slam down Professor X as soon as possible to lock up one of the locations and then we can utilize Mystique to lock down a second additional location with Professor X giving our opponent incredibly restricted ability to add stats to the board while we still have tools such as Claw as well as Spectrum to get additional points of stats into the locations that we've locked down. Sunspot at the bottom end of our curve is excellent not only at soaking up any extra energy we may have laying around thanks to Electro, but getting this underneath one of our lockdown locations also gives us the ability to get extra stats into it after the fact as well. The rest of the deck is just kind of good ongoing cards as well as Daredevil and Kang who can give us a little bit of added information when we can play the Professor X and where, as well as Orca who can get a pile of stats into a particular location while also getting bigger from our spectrum in a game where we're playing out two six drops. At any rate, I hope you enjoy the games here today. I think they are a ton of fun and showcase this deck can be powerful in the right situations. If you do, make sure to snap that like button and check back in again tomorrow for another highlight here on YouTube. I'm gonna Professor X Death's Domain and then I'm gonna Mystique Professor X The Strange Academy, I think. And then I'm gonna soak up the sun. Do, 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 do. Uh, Blue Marvel gives them plus 8 in the middle, up to 14. My Claw gives us plus 7 up to 13, but we beat the Blue Marvel on the left. We lose if they drew uh, negative Blue Marvel. Oh, you think I should just Orca? Yeah, I guess Orca is better, huh? I was so focused on winning the middle. Because Orca would still give me plus three in the middle, right? Uh, we're beating Ironheart. They can only play one card because we waved. Oh, Claw is nine. You're right. Claw is six plus three. I don't know why I counted seven. I was counting seven because I have seven energy. Yeah, Claw is nine. Okay, we're beating Blue Marvel. I think we're beating most things here. Victory. Yeah. Always snap when you play the king, chat. <clears throat> Unless you think there's a chance you can get Cosmode. We have priorities, so no chance of that right now.
Okay, so depending on what they do here, we can mystique the vibranium mines and then win it with claw. I assume they're gonna play. The music is a little janky. Oh my God. Oh no, they have priority. Damn it. Fucking arrow and the fun police. All right, it's fine. I'm gonna play Claw and we're gonna draw Orca and win the game. We should mystique the claw. That might do it. Cause I don't want a sunspot cause they're a killmonger deck. It's like, I'll stay for mystique the claw. Let's do it. Sunspot, sunspot dies to killmonger. Yeah, before anybody suggests I play out Lizard, there's an Electro in play. Oh, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. We got him. Ha! Got him! Am I enjoying Kang? I think Kang is deeply problematic. I think the fact that it resets your snap makes snapping kind of uninteresting and dry, and I hope that that changes in the future. Is it a worthwhile token purchase? If they make it so it continues to impact your things the way it impacts currently, I, I would wager almost every deck wants to play. The new card. Uh, okay. I wasn't confident enough going into this play to snap it, but I'm just doing a whole lot of nothing over here, so. Uh, this is actually more than Orca over here, right? It's 11, there are two in the middle. Yeah, Mystiquing Professor X is something this deck is looking to do in certain situations. Feels like you should see more offbeat decks past infinite, but people are sweaty. I mean, it just isn't fun to lose all the time. And as someone who like works really hard to try and find things off the beaten path, you are going to lose a lot playing anything not Thanos or Shuri.
Also an anecdote, I just got pull three complete last night, and I just got enough tokens to buy Thanos. Yeah, yeah, the, the token Tuesdays, as good as they're going to be for the game overall, they're also going to make the lack of balance slash balance issues or whatever you want to call it painfully more apparent because everyone is going to have access to the messed up cards a lot faster. Marvel, Marvel Snap's economic model does an all right job of hiding balance issues for a period of time. It's just problematic that they didn't do anything with the time that their economic model bought them, essentially. Under, under ideal circumstances, I think Marvel Snap's economic model would be a great way for them to, like, get ahead of potential issues when they see a small number of people play with a card that's clearly not okay. The Bishop Bounce deck is the most competitive brew I have worked on all season. It is mostly fine. What happened to the audio? <laughs> what? What? Uh. The music got leached. The music got leached. <laughs> Jelly Bean Warlock, thank you for the three years. Welcome back. All right, so we're going to gain six total over here up to 24, thanks to Sunspot. And then we're going to gain six more in the middle. And we'll see how this shakes out. I think the biggest problem with Thanos Lockjaw is probably Space Stone. I think is the strongest slash most defensive card in the archetype that should be adjusted. Leech too. Leech, Leech is the biggest problem. That's all for today. Snap the like button if you enjoyed it and check back in again tomorrow for another highlight.